And uh, now what's left is to figure out the adjacent side. Well, we already made a note to ourselves that after we used the sine, we were going to use the tangent. Um, so now we're going to use uh, the tangent. Um, we're not using the cosine again because that would not allow us to use our original information. Remember, the convention is that we're going to try to figure out the adjacent side using the original number 4. Well, that means we want to work with the adjacent side and the opposite side. That's the tangent. Now, at this point, if you wanted to, you could use the cosine. You could use the cosine because we do know how long the hypotenuse is now. So if you feel like it, you could use the cosine um, to figure out the adjacent side because we do know how long the hypotenuse is. But usually in physics, people tend in this type of situation to figure everything out based on the information they had originally, not on what they figured out. So I'm going to keep using the tangent. Uh, so I, I will use the tangent here like we planned. So we have the tangent of 35. Again, the asterisk reminds me which angle I'm focusing on. That is the opposite over the adjacent. Toa. Toa. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. We know how long the opposite side is, 4. And we don't know how long the adjacent side is. Now we can cross multiply. Uh, in one direction we would have tangent 35 times the adjacent side. And multiplying the other way, we have 1 times 4. Well, clearly 1 times 4 is just 4. So that's our cross multiplication. Now we have to continue to try to get this variable adjacent by itself. We need to detach this term. We need to detach the tangent 35 from the adjacent term. Well, do the opposite. This tangent term is multiplied times the adjacent term. The opposite of multiplication is division. And the golden rule is that if we divide on one side, we must divide on the other side. So we divide both sides by the tangent of 35. And then the tangents of 35 cancel on the left-hand side. That was the reason why we divided. And that leaves the adjacent term all by itself on the left-hand side. That was our goal. And now we have to use our calculator to do 4 divided by the tangent of 35. You can do that in one step on your calculator. 4 divided by the tangent of 35 is 5.7. 5.7. So we can label that adjacent side as 5.7. And now we figured out everything that we needed. This problem was pretty similar to the previous problems, except on all the previous problems, the one side that I told you was the hypotenuse. And on this problem, you weren't told the hypotenuse, you were told one of the legs. Um, so although there's many ways that this was similar, there are some ways that it was different. Um, so anytime you see anything that's a little bit different than what you're used to, remember to go back to first principles. Label the hypotenuse opposite and adjacent sides, use asterisks, um, and uh, write down using Sokotoa the general definition of the trigonometric functions. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now the fact is that in physics, um, it's very common to be given the hypotenuse and have to figure out the legs. And it's pretty uncommon to be given a leg and have to figure out the other sides. So this example that we just went over is a little bit rare in physics. That's why we've been mainly focusing on problems where you were given the hypotenuse. It's true that in most problems in physics, you will be given the hypotenuse and have to figure out the other two legs. It's a little bit rare to have a situation like this, where you're given a leg and you have to figure out the hypotenuse and the other leg. But even though this is rare, it can certainly come up. It's not freakishly, uh, freakishly rare. Um, so you should definitely know how to do this type of problem. So my point is, again, um, you should be mainly expecting to see problems where you're given the hypotenuse and you have to figure out uh, the other two legs. However, you have to be prepared that every once in a while you will see a problem where you're not given the hypotenuse, where you're given one of the legs. And you have to know how to deal with that as well. Remember that if this problem gave you any difficulty, before you move on to the next problem, you should just redo this problem. Here's another example. Please try to figure out everything you can about this triangle. Let's put in some asterisks to remind ourselves what the original information was. This angle is the right angle, so we know the other two angles have to add up to 90. So this angle must be 90 minus 15. 90 minus 15 is 75. It's 
75 degrees, but we're going to continue to focus on the angle that we were originally given. That's what people usually do. Now let's label the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse because it's opposite to the right angle. This is the adjacent side because it's adjacent to the angle with the asterisk. And the vertical side here is opposite because it's opposite to the angle that we've chosen to put the asterisk on. So let's select which trig functions are going to be useful to us here. Well, in this problem, we were given information about the adjacent side. So we're going to try to figure stuff out using the information that we have about the adjacent side. So we're only planning to use trig functions that will refer to the adjacent side. We can use the cosine because that refers to the adjacent side. And we can use the tangent because that refers to the adjacent side. But it looks like it wouldn't be very helpful to use the sine because that doesn't refer to the adjacent side. If we try to use the sine, we're not going to be able to use this number 8. So this is something that we've started doing on the last couple of problems. It can help to make a plan ahead of time as to which of your trig functions are going to be useful. If you're, if you're having any trouble with the trig function still, um, you should just be writing down SOHCAHTOA. There's, um, there's nothing wrong with just writing down SOHCAHTOA to help you in uh, solving problems. And then once you've got that written down, you can use asterisks to indicate the functions that you plan to use on the problem. All right, we can start with either the cosine or the tangent. I feel like starting with the cosine. Cosine of 15. The asterisk indicates that we're focusing on the 15, not the 75. You could focus on the 75 if you wanted to, but usually people focus on the angle they were originally given. Cut. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. This is ADJ for the adjacent side, and this is HYP for the hypotenuse. The adjacent side has a length of 8, and the hypotenuse we don't know. In order to get rid of the fractions, we have to cross multiply. Cosine 15 times hypotenuse. And multiplying diagonally in the other direction, we have 1 times 8, which is just 8. Now, how can we get this hypotenuse term by itself? We have to detach the cosine 15 by doing the opposite. The cosine 15 is being multiplied times the hypotenuse term. The opposite of multiplication is division. So we divide by cosine 15. And the golden rule of algebra is that if we divide one side, we have to divide the other side of the equation. Then the cosine terms cancel. That leaves the hypotenuse term all by itself on the left-hand side. That was our goal. And now we use our calculator to do 8 divided by cosine 15. You can do that in one step on your calculator. 8 divided by cosine 15. That's 8.3, approximately. Every time you figure something out, please build it into your sketch. So we know the hypotenuse now is 8.3. All right, and now continuing with our plan, after we used the cosine, we were planning to use the tangent. Now, at this point, if you really wanted to, you could use the sine. We can use the sine now because we know the hypotenuse. Now that we know the hypotenuse, we could use the sine term. But that's not the way these problems would usually be done. Uh, instead, people would try to use the original information. They would try to keep working with the 8. So let's use the tangent. Also, you could use the Pythagorean theorem here, but again, that's not how this is usually done. So we have the tangent of 15. Toa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Toa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. We don't know how big the opposite, term, uh, opposite side is, so we just keep writing that out. But we were given the adjacent side, that's 8. Now we have one equation and one unknown, so we can flex our algebra skills and solve for the opposite side. We can cross multiply. Uh, one times the opposite side is just the opposite side. And then we have 8 times the tangent of 15. We can do this on our calculator. 8 times the tangent of 15 is 2.1. So the opposite side has a length of 2.1. All right, and again, witness the power of trigonometry. 
even though we were only given one side and one angle, we were able to use trigonometry to find all the sides and all the angles. All right, remember again that this question was a little bit unusual in physics because in this problem, we were given a, a leg. We were not given the hypotenuse. In most problems in physics, you'll know the hypotenuse and start from that. Oh, but occasionally you will um, be given a leg and have to start from that. So it, it's, it's good to know how to solve both types of problems. I hope that for many of you, um, you're starting to find these problems kind of boring and easy. Uh, but if there's anyone out here, out there who's not finding these problems boringly easy, remember the way to master this material more quickly is to try to imitate exactly the notation that I'm using on the board. The way I've been writing these problems on the board is the precise, precise notation you should use while these problems are difficult for you or while you find yourself making careless mistakes. Once the problems start to get very easy for you, um, you don't need to use all this notation. But as long as these are difficult, try to imitate the approach that I'm demonstrating on the board.